I am in Morrison, Colorado at the Morrison Natural History Museum. Uh, this town is very famous for its natural and geologic history. There's Dinosaur Ridge and Red Rocks Park, which you can actually see out there in the distance somewhere. So I figured I'd learn more here at the Natural History Museum. This is a small natural history museum that often gets overlooked, as opposed to some of the bigger and more famous attractions here in Morrison, Colorado. Dinosaurs are a big deal here, as several species were discovered at nearby Dinosaur Ridge, so this museum is almost entirely about dinosaurs. And I always love a good old dinosaur museum. They actually take visitors on a guided tour through this museum, which I was not expecting. The guide does provide a lot of specific information, although this museum definitely has more of a self-guided setup. Anyways, in 1877 there were land surveys around Morrison that led to some pretty significant fossil discoveries around Dinosaur Ridge. That is a replica skull of a Tylosaurus, which is a giant sea lizard that once dwelled in the Western Interior Seaway. A giant seaway that existed back then and cut right through Morrison. This is an Allosaurus skull. They were related to the T-Rex, the skull is definitely similar, and they were the top of the food chain here in the metro area during the late Jurassic period. Here is the hind leg of an Allosaurus. They were able to move fairly quickly and powerfully with these giant legs. And this is their short little arm. It's not quite as stubby as the T-Rex arm, but still probably not their most useful limb. Here are some late 19th century sketches of the dinosaur fossils discovered here in 1877 at the Morrison Quarry No. 5. The bone wars between rivaling paleontologists was going on during that time. Here are some Apatosaurus bones. Clearly it had a very long neck. This massive species of dinosaur was discovered here in Morrison in 1877. I will mention that, like most natural history museums, pretty much all the dinosaur bones and fossils are cast recreations. There's its foot. The Apatosaurus was a sauropod, just a big jolly herbivore. The first Stegosaurus fossils and full skeleton was also discovered here in Morrison in 1877. The Stegosaurus is one of the most famous dinosaurs, so that is pretty cool. Here are some Stegosaurus fossils. Apparently the paleontologist who discovered them originally thought the Stegosaurus had an Apatosaurus head. But once he put things together he figured it out. Stegosauruses are known for their unique back plates and tail spikes. This is the skull of a Stegosaurus, which was an herbivore, so it just had small teeth for chewing plants. This is a cast of the first Stegosaurus track discovered in Colorado. Probably a dinosaur ridge. Here is the hind foot skeleton of a Stegosaurus, compared to a rendering of what the foot actually looked like. There was also the Camptosaurus, which was very similar to the Stegosaurus, and there are some fossils and a track of one. A hundred and forty-eight million years ago, Four small stegosauruses crossed a stream and left their tracks behind. And this was the stream bed. Those are their track prints. Again, they were just small stegosauruses, but clearly as they grew up, their footprint got a lot bigger. Now onto some more sauropod giants of the Jurassic period. The different species used different strategies, to avoid competition with each other and all survive in the Jurassic savanna. On the right is a Camarasaurus skull, in the center is a Diplodocus skull, and on the left is a Brontosaurus skull. Well, we nicknamed him the Jurassic Woodchipper because he's got these massive teeth and probably ate really rough stuff. Maybe even chewed the bark off of trees. These are some infant Apatosaurus tracks the smallest sauropod tracks in the world. There is a lot of spacing between the tracks on here, so the baby dino was running at a slow pace, which had apparently never been seen before on a track fossil. This is a Utah Raptor, which lived during the Cretaceous era following the Jurassic era. This one is positioned in an interesting pose, 
Of course, dinosaur skeletons are usually postured to be dramatic, but this one is preening. The fossils of close relatives to the Utah Raptor maintain evidence of feathers surrounding their skeletons, and those feathers require cleaning as they get dirty and messed up sometimes. Because of this, it is now believed that the Utah Raptor had feathers, and so this resting Utah Raptor is preening its feathers and scratching an itch caused by some sort of parasite, or shuffling the feathers back into position. I think these guys would do is run their prey down, use that thing to just gut it. The Cretaceous era's western interior seaway has some sea monsters, like the Cledace Liodontis. When Colorado became a shallow waterway, dinosaurs still managed to live around here on the tidal flats and beaches, and left a variety of footprints. These were left by an unknown species because the skeletal remains were not fossilized. That is a Geosternbergia genus skeleton, one of a group of flying dino species sort of like the pterodactyl. This is a Tyrannosaurus rex skull. Of course the king of the dinosaurs and a ferocious carnivore. They were around here, but the problem is their fossils aren't very common. In 1874, a boy found a T-Rex tooth near Golden, Colorado, but otherwise not much has been found here in Colorado. This one did get a pretty large hole in its skull, probably from a fight. And here's another one of the most famous dinosaurs, the Triceratops. Lots of Triceratops fossils have been found in the Denver area, although back in the day they were thought to have been a giant bison. So here is a view of the backside of a Triceratops skull. You usually don't see this view. That's where the vertebrae would be connected. Mature Triceratops and next by vertebrae are fused together, making this fairly vast platform of bone, and then all of the muscles are located in here to support the head that it moves. This is the frontal cortexes. This part back here is is should be ignored because it's just part of the... Here is a palm frond fossil from the late Cretaceous period. There were palms here in Denver, meaning it was a good deal warmer year round during that time. The last room has some post dinosaur displays. As the Rocky Mountains ascended into the sky, Cenozoic era big mammals ruled the region, though there is apparently a lack of fossilized remains of them. This is pretty awesome, a woolly mammoth skull. They've never found one in Colorado, but they were here. There's some woolly mammoth hair, along with some other mammoth bones. There's a colossal dog bone on the fireplace mantle. And here are some big cat skulls. They've also got a few live animals here, like the snake, And there are some turtles. The museum does have an active paleontology lab in the back. I was able to take a peek in, and the director talked to my tour group for a few minutes and showed what they were working on. This bone here is part of the snout of a head that looked like this. See the purple bones? That's an Apatosaurus. And that's about actual size. The shape of this bone is unlike anything we've ever seen with any other cousin of a pterosaurus. Turns out this is the first time we're seeing this region of the skull from this dinosaur. The first of pterosaurus was dug up literally just right outside the window there on the side of the hill. Back in 1877 within town limits. And it's a big dinosaur. So that was the inside, but they've got a few more things outside. There is a time garden with lots of large outdoor fossils. They also let visitors test out the spine drill on a rock. The drill is used by paleontologists to gently carve out fossils. I had never done that before, so that was cool. Carving out the fossils is definitely an intricate process. I've seen that there are bones in here, but you can also tell from what you just saw, it's very difficult to get them out. They've also got a sand pit for kids to dig up fake bones. So that was a small but pretty good natural history museum. 
It's really a dinosaur museum with lots of replicas, but there are also some real fossils that were neat. I don't usually talk about admission prices, but I did think it was a little high here. Just so you know, but it is worth visiting here. By the way, that is Dinosaur Ridge. With some Denver skyscrapers in the background, I do have a separate video on Dinosaur Ridge linked in the description. There is a lack of taxidermy at the Morrison Natural History Museum, but I heard there is some at a restaurant in the small town of Morrison itself, so let's go there next. Alright, I'm gonna get lunch at the Red Rocks Grill. It is right by the entrance to Red Rocks Park, which I also have a separate video on. That's definitely the main attraction in Morrison. Yep, this place does have some taxidermy lining the walls. It looks like most of the mounts are named. That is Clinton the Bison. That is Jacobo the Elk. This guy is probably my favorite, Spencer the Jackalope. I always love seeing jackalopes. I think they're popular around these parts. There's Lauren the Lynx, at least I think that's a lynx. That's Bullwinkle the Bull Moose, alongside Andy and Rocky the Squirrels. This is Mikey the Caribou, and it looks like he had an abnormal growth on his antlers. One grew right from the center of his forehead. Here's Terry the Mountain Lion. That's Tyler. Must be some sort of mountain goat. Here's Boris the Warthog. That's a very appropriate name. And that is Kiki the Bass. I like how they named their taxidermy. And the food here is good too. It definitely seems like the best place to eat in downtown Morrison. So that was the Morrison Natural History Museum and the taxidermy of the Red Rocks Grill. Both locations were fun. And of course there is a lot more here in Morrison, like Dinosaur Ridge and the famous Red Rocks Park and Amphitheater, which I have separate videos on. They are linked in the description. Additionally, I have filmed videos at other dinosaur and natural history museums, along with all sorts of other museums, roadside attractions, national parks, and more. Also, I would appreciate it if you'd like the video, maybe share it, and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.